From the St. Ignatius Chapel at the Manresa Jesuit Spiritual Renewal Center in Pickering, Ontario. The National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are Len Gillis and Claudia Gillis-Smith from Toronto, Ontario for prayers and for their intentions. The second is the Pereira family from, <coughs> from Etobicoke, Ontario, in memory of the deceased family members. The third is an anonymous donor from Langley, British Columbia. Our thanks go out to the donors for the gift of this Mass. Now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist more worthily, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. You were, sent to heal. <coughs> you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father, Abraham, from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did in its midst and afterwards I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and made the sea come upon them and cover them, and your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards, you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I handed them over to you, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. He sent and invited Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore he blessed you, so I rescued you out of his hand." When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you, and also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I handed them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored, and towns that you had not built, and you live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive yards that you did not plant. The word of the Lord. 
Not as human words, but as truly the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees came to Jesus, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? Jesus answered, Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command us to give a a certificate of dismissal to divorce her? Jesus said to them, It was because you were so hard-hearted that Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for unchastity and marries another commits adultery. His disciples said to them, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But Jesus said to them, Not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. As I read that first reading from Joshua, I was filled with horror. Here is a God of mercy and compassion. Here is a God that 
walked in the Garden of Eden together with Adam and Eve and spoke to them as friends. And suddenly he is driving away the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Hittites, the Canaanites and the Jebusites. Where does this God of anger, where does this God of war suddenly come into the picture? Historians tell us that in the beginning, when the Israelites came into the Promised Land, they were just a small group that infiltrated and gradually took possession of one small portion here, one small portion there, and they gradually got mixed up with all these tribes that we mentioned. But in order to show that God was so powerful and so mighty, the writer of the book of Joshua wrote it in such a way that it showed that God was all powerful and all strong, and he would sweep away all these nations like dust is swept before a broom. The narrative that we have is a narrative of the renewal of the covenant. And it begins with such grandeur, with pomp and circumstance, beginning from the very beginning of the time of even Noah, Abraham, and the rest. And it shows the key or the core of that covenant. And the core of that covenant was God had mercy on the Hebrew people when they were in Egypt. He said, I saw your sufferings and I came down to save you. I saved you in such a way that when you sprinkled the blood on your lintels, I slaughtered all the Egyptians, the firstborn of animals and of the, of the Egyptians, but I set you free. I walked with you through the Reed Sea while the chariots of Pharaoh were crushed. I walked with you through the desert of Sinai like a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud during the day. So you see that this covenant was only a one in a series of covenants. God made a covenant with Noah and said, never more will I destroy humankind. <clears throat> God made a covenant with Abraham and said, your children will be as numerous as the sands on the seashore. God made a covenant with King David and said, your dynasty will never end. But the people also had to do a part for their covenant. If God was not going to destroy humankind, Noah had to build an ark. If the number of Abraham's children were as many as the sands on the seashore, he had to leave his comfortable comfort zone in the Ur of the Chaldees in present-day Iraq, around the Mesopotamian Delta, between the Tigris and the Euphrates. Beautiful land. And come to a land that he did not know, among a people he did not know, and speak a language he did not know. So Abraham had to do that. And as for the King David, he was a sinner of the first rate. And yet God made a covenant with him and said, but you will have to be the shepherd of my people. And it is in this sense of relationship that we can understand this covenant that was made with the Hebrew people. And God made it with the Hebrew people in what was Palestine which is today Israel and Palestine. But they, on their part, what did they have to do? They had to treat the stranger, the visitor, and the foreigner with respect. And this was anybody that were bordering on one side Syria, on the other side Egypt. So anybody who came from them, they had to treat them with respect and with honor and give them security and protection. Do you think that is happening in Israel and Palestine today? You make the decision because over here, reason doesn't seem to come in. It's emotion. We choose one side or the other. I'll leave you with that to ponder 
because that is the covenant God made with all the people. As we come to the gospel, we have a red herring. And the red herring is, should we divorce or no? And Jesus goes to the heart of the matter. He says, look, from the very beginning, God created man and woman to be together and to be together forever. And these are the questions that are asked in marriage <clears throat> before a husband and wife can change their, and exchange their vows. Will you accept children lovingly from God? And that is exactly what Eve did. She bore a son and his name was Cain. And will you love and honor each other? And God said, it is not good for man to be alone. And so I'll make a companion for him. And so this whole business of divorce is a red herring, which I will speak about at another time and in another place. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. For all those in our daily mass televis televised mass community who have asked to be included in the prayer intention book, especially for families, for peace in times of blessing and in times of difficulty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our friends and benefactors, for the sponsors of this mass, that the Lord may bless them and grant them their intentions, blessings on their families, and health and security at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have suffered as a result of this COVID, for those who haven't been able to bury their dead in the way they would like to, for the baptisms and marriages that were done in a hurry because of the COVID, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to receive these our prayers that we have made aloud and in the depths of our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, Jesus stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. and earth are 
Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And wherever you are, let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who will that we be partakers in the one bread and one chalice, grant, we pray, so to live that we may, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Oh,